Why, hello there! Welcome back. Welcome to part 15 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1-200 scale model of the Titanic. In today's episode, I've got a few things on the list. I have done some test fitting of the superstructure to make sure everything fits together properly. Uh, I've done quite a lot of work with the portholes on sea deck, adding the 19-inch uh, porthole uh, photo etch parts and adding UV resin into the portholes to act like glass. Um, I've also done a bit of work with the directing of the smoke up to the three funnels that require smoke coming out. Um, and also, my KA set has arrived, so I'll go through that in a bit more detail at the end of the episode as well. So without any further ado, I will crack on with what I've been up to. So the first thing I wanted to do was to make sure that all of my superstructures fitted together properly. Um, and this is because I'd read quite a lot uh, from various different people who've already built this kit, that um, it's been quite tricky to get the um, the B deck, A deck and boat deck sections to tessellate together properly, especially when you add the superstructure sides onto there. So before doing any gluing, I wanted to make sure that my, my kit was going to be reasonably okay in that respect. Um, so I resolved to do some dry testing. Before that, though, I needed to combine the two halves of the superstructure sides together. So I did that with some modelling glue. And then you'll notice I've been filing these sides down to get the join in the two parts as smooth as possible. I then used a modelling putty to fill up the gaps between the sides. Um, I use my fingers for this, which it's probably not a very good idea in reality, but um, I find it's the best way to actually manipulate the putty to get it into the hole. Um, once I'd finished applying the putty, I then sanded it down and sprayed these parts again with a final coat of Humbrol Matte White to finish their painting. sprayed the joint locally I then also did a final coat across the entire length of the superstructure sides. Uh, this was because uh, some of the parts were slightly different colours, probably because one half had got slightly more white paint on than the other half from when I sprayed them originally. Just doing a wee bit of a test fit on my decks here. You can see I've not glued anything, I'm just actually using blue tack to sort of fix them down. Um, but here I've got, let's see, B deck, um, not glued, but just popped in. And I'm just trying to see how well everything slots together because from chatting to people online, a lot of people have said that the superstructure is notoriously difficult to actually get to sort of tessellate together properly. So I'm trying to make sure that 
in advance of gluing everything together, um, I've given myself the best possible chance of getting everything working. And I mean, to be fair, it's not bad, but equally, I see what they mean. There are, it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't sort of click into place. Got a deck in now. Uh, you can see this is the uh, the promenade and into the nice covered section. I know a lot of people are slightly disappointed with how thick these walls are. Uh, and I 100% agree with you, actually. I think if this was a, uh, a standing uh, sort of display case kit, I would be a bit irritated by how thick these are. Because, I mean, you know, that's in scale terms, that's more than the thickness of a person. Um, <laughs> which is far too thick. Um, for me, though, it actually adds quite a lot of rigidity, so I'm not really complaining. And as this section is going to be lifted off, rigidity is really quite important for me. Uh, so I'm not complaining. Um, but I do appreciate for static modelers, it's a bit frustrating. Anyway, a deck's on now. Um, and it's not that bad a fit the, there's definitely bits that will need to be tweaked and you know i'm sort of hovering over here and there's bits i need to sort of just to apply a little bit of pressure to get them to line up but i think in reality this stuff is not that bad really um it's certainly not as disastrous as i know some people have had um and i suspect it's probably just a bit of luck of the draw really you know some people might have had parts that have warped a little bit um, other people might just have got slightly less well injection moulded pieces, I don't know, but um, these seem to be okay. Uh, so, you know, we'll, um, we'll be able to work with this, I think. We've got the boat deck on now, still fitted on pretty well, really. I'm just starting to get that lovely little curvature on the bridge. You can see how the whole ship slots together now. Um, it's nice, actually, it's good. Um, so this is quite useful. Uh, it shows me that I'm I'm confident I'll be able to get this stuff going pretty well, really. Um, the other useful thing that this is going to give me is, um, for the first time, it allows me to see exactly where my funnels are going to go. And um, that's really useful because, as you know, there's a smoke generator about here. Um, but that needs to divvy up smoke between three funnels. So I need to do some pipe routing, which allows some smoke to come up out of here out of number two funnel, some more smoke out of number one funnel, and some smoke out of number three funnel. So I need to have a system in here which divvies up that smoke into three funnels. Um, funnel at the back obviously doesn't have any smoke coming out of it, but on the real ship it was used for ventilation among other purposes. Um, and my smoke generator needs a significant quantity of oxygen to work properly. So what I'm thinking of doing is drilling a hole down through these decks in the fourth funnel as well and running a pipe in there because that will give me brilliant ventilation. Um, and I quite like the idea, actually, of, even though it's a model, I quite like the idea of using the fourth funnel for ventilation as that was its purpose on the real ship. Um, I think that's quite an elegant way of doing things, really. Um, so this has been quite useful, really, to see how everything slots together. Um, and it's it's given me a bit of faith that the superstructure is going to be pretty robust. I mean, even when it's held together with blue tack, it feels pretty solid to me. So it's going to be pretty robust. So I've just built up my decks again, and you can see this time I've done it so that I can position the funnels on the boat. So there you are, you can see... Well, firstly, you can see how much work there is still to do. Um, but my rationale here is because I wanted to work out exactly where the funnel positionings are down through all the decks so that I can build the series of pipes needed to direct the smoke from my smoke generator up the first three funnels. So that's what I'm able to do having built all these decks. I can take the funnels off, see exactly where I need to make a hole in this deck, the one below it, the one below it, the one below it, and so on. So using the funnels on the boat deck as a guide, I then drilled through each of the decks in turn to make a hole to allow my smoke pipes to come up through the ship. So we've got the smoke systems on now. I'm sure you get the idea. Smoke generator's down there doing its thing, and then the smoke is divided up to the third funnel. 
Second funnel here. I don't know if you can quite see the first funnel here. You'll notice that at the minute that very little smoke is coming out of here. That is because um, there is significantly less resistance for the smoke to come out of here than to come out of here because there's only one bend in each of those, there's two bends here. You can model uh, flow in a very similar way to how you'd model uh, current flow uh, in electronics. So what I might have to do once I've got my angle brackets up here and up here to take the smoke up to the first and third funnels is I may well have to shrink down the tubing for one of the funnels or another of the funnels to try to balance the smoke flowing out of each of the three funnels in turn. Um, if you didn't, you might find that the second funnel has lots of smoke coming out and one and two have very little. So that needs to be thought about, but we'll cross that bridge once the entire smoke system is actually complete. I haven't quite finished this system yet because I'm waiting on angle brackets arriving here uh, and here, uh, and they're in the post at the minute. Um, once they arrive, though, I'll be able to make the upstands for the funnels in all three locations, and that will then give me my completed smoke distribution system. I should say that I've actually designed the piping to go underneath these areas rather than above them, and that allows the superstructure to sit comfortably on top without actually fouling on any of these pipes. Um, the idea I'm working on at the minute is that I'll have silicon tubing rising up from each of these um, barbed fixings, and there'll be ones on the end here, right angle barbed fixings there, and on funnel one as well. Um, and these will rise up through the decks, up to the funnels. Now, on the positions where the funnels are mounted, I've got these barbed fixings, and these go below as well as above. Now, the idea is that the silicon tubing will be cut in such a way that when the superstructure sits down on top of this pipe, it will connect into here, not with any degree of real force, but enough force that smoke will go up through this instead of uh, flooding through, through the superstructure and making it look like the ship's on fire. The idea here is that that allows me to be able to lift the superstructure off without needing to disconnect these airlines. Now I know that that relies on me being able to cut the silicon accurately enough that it will form a nice seal on this piece without being so without without being so well cut that it then sort of has to be yanked off. Um, but I think if it can be done, it really simplifies things because it means that you can quite easily lift the superstructure off without needing to worry about disconnecting airlines. Um, and pull it back on again, and you automatically connect in your three funnels. That's the idea I'm working off at the minute. If I get to the end of the project and I find that that's not really practical, we might have to look at something else, potentially something like magnetic connectors, which automatically connect these airlines up. Um, but for now, that's the idea I'm going off, and I'm pretty confident it will work. So that's where I'm at with the smoke distribution system at the moment. There is more to be done on it, but I am really at a point where I can't go any further till other things arrive in the post. And also, I'm happy that as a system it's going to work. So I'm happy to leave that there. The next job I want to show you is my finishing the photo wedge portholes on the superstructure sides. Uh, as you can see, there were a lot of these to get through. Um, and so the procedure I used for this was to fill the hole almost entirely with UV resin first um, to make a sort of backstop. I then added the photo etch parts into the hole and orientated it correctly and then added another small drop of UV resin on top. And I found that was the best way of getting a really good result, which also didn't take a massive amount of time to complete.
took quite a long time but they're all done now we've got all of those brass very very small somewhat irritating tiddly 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 little bits of brassiness into the portals and to be fair it does look a lot better for it it's one of those things that from far away you can you sort of you, you can't really see the detail but what it does is it just sort of makes the porthole stand out a bit more just makes it pop a little bit more um so i think it, it it probably was worthwhile doing to be honest it is just a bit of a faff in other news my ka set has arrived um so that didn't take very long at all actually very happy with that um there is masses of stuff some very good quality 3D printing. Um, some lovely lifeboats. Uh, some people. So I'm now going to have ample people on the boat. Just generally a lot of stuff. Uh, I think really my, my initial reaction when I got this was uh, more overwhelmed than anything because there is a hell of a lot of stuff. Uh, but it all looks very good, and I mean, it, it's stuff that sort of recreates detail that I just wouldn't get otherwise. You know, this is one of the hatch covers, um, and you can see it's got things like it's got slight ripples in the in the in the canvas cover, and areas where it's I'm trying to see if I can get it to focus. Areas where it's um, tied down, and that's just sort of detail that you, you I just wouldn't get otherwise. Um, you know, so it's it is very good quality, and that's the same same with these Engelhart lifeboats here. You know, you've got all the uh, the detail underneath the boat, and again on top, the canvas sort of just rippling slightly as if it's taut. Um, so that's really good quality. Um, there are a few bits that I won't be using. Uh, the rudder I won't be using because uh, the KA rudder is it's not very thick, which is. Um, it's good in model terms, but probably not quite strong enough for my purpose. And I have my um, 3D printed rudder from Shapeways anyway, which is just brilliant and nice and solid. So that's absolutely fine. There's a bunch of brass parts in here as well. Uh, I won't go through all of these because you'll see them at various points when I build them. But 
various bits I really like, like the capstans, uh, and also um, big fan of the masts, particularly because the foremast has the crow's nest uh, doorway in it, which is a really, really nice little touch. Um, so, a lot of stuff to get stuck into. There's also a huge amount of photo etch. Um, there is absolutely masses of it, and again, I won't show you it all because you'll see it at a later point, but there is a lot of photo etch. Uh, and there's also, I'll just move the camera for this, um, some very nice painted photo etch. So this stuff here, it's got the uh, entrance signs, first class entrance, second class entrance, the, uh, the tiller, uh, notice signs. There's debate about whether these are meant to be red or black. I suspect they're meant to be black, so I may or may not use those, but they're very nice anyway. Um, signs for the telegraph handles, and also uh, part of the bridge's back wall, which is a very nice little touch. Uh, there's also some stained glass, which is great for the smoking room and other areas. There's also a wooden deck, which is underneath. I don't know if you can quite see it, but there is a wooden deck underneath. Obviously, I'm not going to use that because um, I am using the... Uh, what's it called? I forget what it's called. Scale decks. That was obvious. Because um, I'm using the scale decks instead. So I'm probably going to sell this on eBay or something just to offset the cost of the, um, the KA set. But overall, it's really good. Um, it's certainly very high detail, and I think the reason I went for this over Pontos is just little things like this. I'm going to show you this part. So, I don't know if you can see it in focus, uh, but this is the um, this is the um, breakwater on the Vauxhall deck, and you can see that this is all one part, including the little stanchions that come off it. Now on the Pontos set, this was one part and the stanchions were independent parts which you had to glue on yourself. Um, fine for a, for a, you know, on a shelf model, but for my model, I just think that is begging for parts to be lost. Um, when things get snapped off, you'll never find them again. And I just think overall, probably much less resilient to being moved all the time. And it's just little things like that which made me think that KA was probably going to be more useful for my purpose. So with the KA set's arrival, that really now does give me license to start doing the sort of heavy-duty modelling on the um, visible parts of the decks on the model. Um, and my intention is to do a video on each deck. So, you know, I'll do a video on the Vauxhall deck, a video on the Poop deck, a video on either well deck. Um, and they'll be coming probably quite slowly because this will be time consuming work, um, but they'll be coming as and when I finish them. You can see here I'm just preparing to actually start doing the modelling by spraying a protective layer over my scale decks. This is a matte varnish and it'll just make sure that if any paint spills on them it can be wiped off, keeps them waterproof um, and just makes sure that they'll last as long as the rest of the model. So that's about it for this episode. Um, I haven't really got anything else to show you, so that's where I'm going to close the video. The next video is probably going to be on the actual modelly kind of stuff, and I'll probably start with one of the well decks, but we'll we'll see how we go on that one. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions or any comments or anything, pop them down below, and I'll do my best to get back to them. Um, if you did enjoy it, give me a like and even think about subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.